In this video, we review daily and weekly charts for the S&P 500 in the context of possible bullish and bearish outcomes over the short and intermediate term. We also review some potentially bearish signals related to stock market breadth. These are daily charts of the S&P 500. This is as of the close on Friday. This is as of the close on Monday, November 21st. Looks noisy here. The concepts are simple. We closed right here on Friday. And as you can see, these parallel trend lines, this orange line was acting as support. We had this blue line close by. This horizontal support level was here. This is a green trend line. This is a parallel green trend line. Lots of things intersecting here. You also had moving averages potentially coming into play, the 100-day moving average. A lot going on in here. Let's compare and contrast that to the close on Monday. As you can see, a lot of these potential areas of support have given away. Now, that doesn't mean we can't pop back up. Some possibilities here are that we get a bounce still in the 180 to 175 area and come back up. But you'll notice what once was support, all of these clustering moving averages and lines, now becomes resistance. So any move in the markets back up is going to potentially run into resistance in these areas here. It is possible that this trend line and this trend line allows the market to bounce all the way back above 1250 and we wouldn't even rule out coming up here in around 1263, 1265-ish. One more move above the 200-day moving average is not likely, but it's possible. What seems to be bounding the market now is this blue trend line here and this parallel trend line here. There's white space here that has a tendency to get filled. So when you look at the possible areas of resistance here and contrast that with the possible areas of support here, from a risk-reward perspective, it's going to be harder for the market to go up in the short term than it is for it to go down. Some other points. On Friday, MACD here had not yet crossed zero as of Monday, it's much, much closer. And you'll see when MACD crosses zero or moves into negative territory, the market tends to continue to decline, at least in the short term. Here's a cross here, declines. Cross here in early August, declines. It looks like we may be setting up for a cross later in the week, which possibly may bring prices down into this white space here. This is another look of a daily chart as of Monday, the close on November 21st. This chart takes more of a bullish perspective. We added to some of our bearish and deflationary positions on Monday, but we also kept quite a bit of cash around. And this is partly the reason why. We've got trend lines here where you could see this market bounce. We were oversold on 60-minute charts. And we've also got retracement levels that seem to have hold. There's a retracement level at 1187, and there's also one at 1184. And you'll notice the low on Monday was 1183. So a case can be made that we could pop back up towards 1200, maybe around to 1217-ish. Then you run into other retracement levels around 1222. And then there's some horizontal support lines in that same neighborhood. You can see here there's some white space that could be filled towards 1240. And as we mentioned on the last slide, coming up above 1260 is well within uh, logical limits in terms of where we are right now. On the last slide, we mentioned that we somewhat sat on the fence on Monday. We redeployed some of our cash, but we kept some powder dry. The last slide, we looked at bullish implications possibly for the remainder of the week. This supports bearish outcomes for the intermediate term. This is the NYSC summation index, which is a measure of market breadth, which talks about or refers to the number of advancing 
stocks versus declining stocks. And the thought process is, is healthy markets have broad participation. And when that participation starts to wane, that's a sign of weakness. So what we care about here from a summary perspective is usually when the summation index ticks down, especially from high levels, like in this box up here, this is the S&P 500 at the bottom, summation index ticks down from a high level, stocks decline. Tick down from a high level, stocks declined. Same thing, little decline, tick down, stocks decline. Same situation. Also, when you get a sharp decline like this, it tends to send a little bit stronger signal. So this turn down here, and as you can see, since the October low, we haven't had anything resembling this turn here, is indicative of a tired market. You can also see just simple trend lines drawn here. The market closed, again, peeking into this white space here, which says we could see further declines in the next week to 10 days. Just a few comments here on a weekly chart of the S&P 500 as of Monday's close on the 21st. Similar concepts. You can see areas of support and resistance, white space that may be filled. This trend line off of the 2010 summer lows, typically when a t trend line is broken, you come back and it acts as resistance. This was a false breakout here, and this was a head fake that threw a lot of people in terms of going long or covering their shorts. Turned out to be a false breakout. There's a trend line there now. One of the main things here is we also broke this trend line here. So the last two weeks were below here, so this would become resistance. This parallel trend line here, even though it's possible that we held near it today or could even have closed above it, depending on how you draw it, the fact that we came down intraday on Monday Below this says, even if we bounce all the way back 1250, 1275, or even here, probably says that this eventually will be taken out. 1175 also has some horizontal resistance. You can see it was meaningful to the market here, 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 here. Relatively meaningful in these areas. So this is another area. 1175. If you get below this, a lot of white space could be a, a fairly quick move to 1050. As far as for the balance of the week, Tuesday and Wednesday and Friday, we would really prefer, even though it was short term it would hurt our current bearish or deflationary positions, we would still prefer, because we have cash, to see this market bounce back up. And we hope it does bounce back up and gives us a, a good entry point for some of our cash up in this area. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.